Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Hurricane Kirk, which may impact the UK weather during the second half of next week, potentially bringing the risk of some pretty heavy rain and possibly some pretty strong winds. We'll start off though by looking at the National Hurricane Centre forecast for the storm. This shows it maintaining its major hurricane status, so that's Category 3 or above. In this case, Kirk is a Category 3 storm, uh, until Sunday, and then it starts to gradually weaken into a hurricane. And then by around Tuesday, the forecast is it will transition from being a tropical storm, so fueled by the ocean uh, with lots of thunderstorms around the centre, to an ex-tropical storm or a post-tropical cyclone, uh, which is more fueled by temperature contrast, the jet stream, that kind of thing. And it will maintain its kind of post-tropical characteristics as it then moves into northwest Europe, potentially bringing impacts of wind and rain, like I said, uh, either across northern France and then into parts of uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, etc., or across parts of England and Wales, or also both. Um, but notice the large spread in this cone, that's called the cone of uncertainty, um, typically, and that indicates the wide range of potential tracks, and so possibly the wide range in potential outcomes as well. But this is just to kind of give you a rough idea of what's going to go on. In terms of the satellite imagery for Kirk, I thought we'd just take a look at this for fun. There's a lot of convection ongoing around the centre, indicated in black and white. There's a small eye still, but the storm is moving fairly quickly to the north. And as it moves north, that's where it's going to eventually get picked up by the jet stream and then pushed towards us in the UK. And you can see that if I play that loop through here. So this is the vorticity chart. It will give us a good idea of the overall setup. And you can see Kirk is this ball of um, black uh, across the southern Atlantic here. Also notice we have high pressure across the eastern Atlantic, high pressure across the Caribbean, and so the only natural track it can take is to the northwest, which it will do over the next few days, as you see there. And then what's going to start to happen is Kirk will feel the influence of the jet stream. Now the jet stream has been shifted unusually far south over these last couple of weeks, and as Kirk approaches, it's going to get picked up. It's also going to add energy to the jet stream, which we'll look at in a second. And eventually, it's going to move to the east, which you saw on that uh, forecast there. And so, as that kind of transition occurs, you can see the vorticity is more spread out. It's less intense. This indicates it has become a post-tropical cyclone. But the potential uh, interesting thing is, as it moves uh, further to the north and east, it potentially will re-intensify and cause those wind and rain impacts and you can see that the vorticity uh, increasing there though bear in mind that's just one weather run in terms of the jet stream uh, this is the chart for now and you can see there's Kirk uh, a strong hurricane well actually this is a chart for previously not now sorry <clears throat> but you can see what kind of happens as it interacts with the jet stream it's got a lot of outflow uh, on the northern side and the latent heat release from the thunderstorms will actually add energy to the jet stream and you're going to see this really occur as I play through the loop. There's that segment of outflow, and as it mer merges with the actual jet stream itself, it produces this band, this ribbon of very, very strong winds, uh, looking at 170 to 180 knots there, so approaching 200 miles an hour. And when you often get these high energy bands of the jet stream, number one, the uncertainty in the weather models increases, and number two, the risk of rapidly deepening lows increases, and we're potentially gonna see both of those things um, shortly. So then, as you play through the loop, you can see that kind of zone of strong winds moves to the east, but leaves a sort of split flow pattern where you've got this segment of the jet stream to the south and the segment of the jet stream to the north. And in those split flow patterns, where you get a low pressure in between the two, that can often lead to rapid strengthening because there's a lot of divergence, and divergence aloft um, leads to air rushing in at the surface to fill the gap, it rises and so the pressure lowers and you get a strong storm. In terms of what this might look like, I'll show you one GFS run to give you an idea of the possible solutions. So yeah, this is the uh, six o'clock GFS run. Now, like I said, there's uncertainty, so bear this, uh, sorry, take this with a kind of grain of salt. But you can see what might happen is the storm approaches from the south um, and then moves into France or along the channel, sorry, as a 960 millibar low, which is pretty deep, but also notice all the heavy rain on the northern side. And while, like I said, take this with a grain of salt, because we, there's a lot of uncertainty, we do know for a fact that there will be heavy rain wherever uh, the storm is. And that's because it's dragging up all of this tropical air. There's a lot of kind of 
unusual warmth as well. Actually, this is yeah, this is showing the above average um, moisture in the atmosphere in green, and where you've got a lot of moisture, and then the lift which will occur along the kind of warm front. Um, what's going to happen is you get rising air kind of cooling and condensing with the moisture, and that leads to large bands of rain and potentially heavy rain as well if that vertical motion is really strong. And while we don't know where the heavy rain will be, uh, we do know it will be on the northern side of the low. So if that's a path through the channel, that's going to be through southern England and Wales. If that's a path through the central of England, that's going to be through the Midlands, Wales, into parts of northern England. And if that's a path through kind of northern central France, that's going to be through uh, northern France into the channel and maybe through far south as well. And in terms of wind, what's likely to happen is you'll see the ice bars really tightening on the southern and western side, potentially seeing wind gusts as high as 70, 80 miles an hour in the highest end scenarios. And like I said, we don't know exactly where the wind, wind will be, but we do know it will be on the southern and western edges. And for that reason, of course, the getting the track of the low and also the intensity will be quite important. And I'll show that if we look at the GFS ensembles here. Each of these is showing one possible path of Kirk. Uh, and like I said, the spread is very wide. We have some tracks going through southern England, sorry, uh, central England and the Midlands, some tracks going through France. The general consensus, I would say, at the moment is for a track through the Channel into possibly parts of southern England. So right now, the most likely scenario is um, for rain and also strong winds across the south, and then for the very strong winds to occur through the Channel and in northern France. But the caveat is, is that the exact track depends on the strength of the storm. For example, if your storm, storm is stronger, actually let me change the colour because you can't see, um, if your storm is stronger over here in the Atlantic, the pressure gradient force, which acts this direction uh, in the northern hemisphere, will be stronger, and so the storm will move more to the left, um, like, let me draw out an example, so stronger storms will move more to the left and potentially bring the risk of strong winds further north, whereas the weaker storms um, will just be on the very kind of southern end of that all the different tracks and so that's why kind of understanding the un uh, intensity in track is going to be very important especially if you think about it the stronger storm uh, then also brings much stronger winds further north so for us at least that'll be a very high impact scenario uh, the issue is it's quite hard to um, anticipate well where those kind of the, the best uh, sorry, where the strongest storms will be and if that strongest highest end scenario will actually come to fruition. And that's because the actual dynamics of the jet stream as we come down to kind of Wednesday evening uh, when the storm is likely to be moving through, i just show you there. Yeah, so overnight Wednesday into Thursday is when we're expecting that storm to be moving through. Uh, the jet stream at that point is quite fragmented as you can see. And if that kind of zone of very strong winds which I was talking about earlier really maintains itself, then the divergence in this zone will be stronger and potentially you're going to take a further north track, but other models really don't have that, they have that fizzling out, and so it's quite hard to say exactly where the storm will go, and the kind of only real solution to that is just to wait, wait a few days, wait until Kirk has transitioned from tropical to extropical, uh, and by that point we're probably going to have a much better idea, but I would be watching the models very, very closely, especially if we look at some of these, um, the members to get an idea of the different possible scenarios that are on the table. For example, this is number five, uh, and that shows a very rapidly deepening uh, low moving through the channel, likely to bring some very heavy, sorry, very uh, large waves as well. I didn't mention that earlier, but that's definitely a possibility. And you notice this is just one scenario, but look how strong the ice bars get on that southern and western side, and that would bring very strong winds even both in northern France and at southern England. Now, this is one potential scenario which relied on the much stronger segment of the wind, sorry, of the jet stream, which I was talking about earlier. Notice how strong both those segments are, uh, and we get proper, proper divergence on going here, weak in the middle, and then very strong on both sides. So, this is very conducive to rapid deepening, and we'll probably see a, a northerly track for this. But if I show you other members, so I don't know, let's check number one, number two. So those are quite divergent as well, and that's further north. Let's check 23 or 24. I mean, to be fair, they are actually all showing a fairly uh, strong segment on that northern end. But if I just run through these, you really do get the idea of how different the jet stream is. You can see all of these scenarios have a, a, a different pattern, a different orientation. And because the exact orientation is so crucial to having very rapid deepening, it's just really hard to say... Uh, 
when and how and what kind of deepening is going to occur. I mean, take this one as an example. The divergence on this is a lot less strong. Uh, I mean, it's over there. And so also the timing is different. So the track of the lows will be different. And if I show you the different scenarios of the mean sea level pressure, you can see they're kind of all over the place in both um, timing and kind of location. So, I mean, there definitely is a preference for the channel, I'd say. But the difference, because the pressure gradient will be so tight on the southern edge of that storm, I mean, look, there's a good example of a weak one. Um, but because the, the pressure gradient is going to be so tight on the southern end of this storm, if I show you, uh, yeah, let's just look at the GFS, the, um, the difference even small distances in the track will make is going to be quite large in terms of impacts. So if you look, there's a very tight ice bars. If that's just 50 to 100 miles further north, you're looking at Kent, the southeast, even London getting very strong winds, or it could just stay in the channel. So that's why the kind of potential impacts are so large and why it just really needs to have a lot of close watching over the next few days on these models. And if I run through, you do get an idea of the uh, amount of variation in the exact scenarios. You can see further north, further east, further south, weaker, all of it is there. Um, the main themes, though, I would say, is the risk for very heavy rain on the northern side. Potentially, if this were to occur, 50 to 100 millimetres, um, whoever gets under that rain band, whether that's southern England, which is the most likely area at the moment, northern France, areas further north, that's one thing to look at. And then also the risk of winds, sorry, the risk of winds, risk of winds, sorry, uh, 60, 70, potentially even more on the southern side of that low, whether that is across northern France uh, or southern England. But either way, it looks like we're going to get impacted in some form, um, and potentially those impacts could be significant. So stay up to date with the forecast. I'll try and do videos every day on the storm due to the unusual nature. Uh, and thank you very much for watching, and have a good day. Bye-bye.